The politics of this country is very interesting. And from the look of things, Moses Kuria has played William Kabogo. And Moses Kuria crawled back to William Ruto's corner in Kenya Kwanza. William Kabogo is still threatening to join Azimio. Maybe we need to figure out the old game plan. But for now, I want us to look at this event or this instance which took place yesterday. The Deputy President William Ruto held a meeting with the, his team of Kenya Kwanza in Akuru County, in Njoro in particular. And in the middle of his speech, he noted the presence of the media. And the Deputy President kicked the media out of his meeting. Why do you think the Deputy President, William Ruto, kicked the media out of his meeting? Wengi wao ndiyo wanapata matatizo ya kisiasi. Nika keti chini na rafiki yaku uhuru kenyata. Na tuka kubaliana, nika mwambia my friend uhuru kenyata. Mimi niko tayari. Na nilikuwa na nafasi. Yeah, nilikuwa na nafasi. These media houses, why, why do we have media houses here? Nani ya nini watu tukei ni kwanza tukei manana ya mara. So the question is, why would the deputy president kick the media out of his meeting? The deputy president was in uh, Molo County. Uh, on, uh, why would William Ruto kick out the media out of his meeting? The deputy president was in Akuru County, Molo specifically, to meet with the minority clans or tribes in that, in that area. Molo when you talk of Molo, what comes to mind is the 1992 tribal clashes. And again, when you talk of Molo, what comes to mind is Rigadi Gashagwa. Rigadi Gashagwa is actually unpopular amongst the Kikuyus in diaspora over the Molo incidents. So why would the deputy president kick out the media? What was he telling the people during that particular meeting. In this video, I want us to look at why William Ruto kicked out the media out of his meeting. Before we do that, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And by the way, uh, today I had uh, visitors who a couple from the United States of America who paid me a courtesy call here in Kisumu. We had lunch, that's why I'm late, and uh, it was good. It was a, it was a good encounter. Uh, I don't know whether to mention their names, but maybe sometime. Let us get back to serious business. Why would William Ruto hold a meeting in Akuru with minority tribes? and then throw the media out. Number one, I tend to think that the deputy president wanted to badmouth President Uru Kenyatta. By the time he realized the media were there, the deputy president was actually talking about his relationship with President Uru Kenyatta. And you know so well that the deputy president feels very strongly that Uru Kenyatta betrayed him that Uhuru Kenyatta ought to have supported him in this particular election. But Uhuru Kenyatta is currently doing everything possible within his powers to ensure that William Ruto does not sit anywhere near State House in August. And for William Ruto to appeal to the audience there, he needed to tell them something about the president, their relationship. And some of those things probably might not be the truth they might be lies. So the media would have reported what the deputy president was telling these people about Uru Kenyatta. And Uru Kenyatta would have been pissed off and probably a discussion would have been provoked. So I think he just wanted to badmouth the president 
and then he realized Mida was there and he had to kick them out. Number two, the deputy president was actually trying to protect Rigadiga Shagwa. You know, once Rigadiga Shagwa is given a microphone, what comes out of his mouth can destroy William Ruto. And for a long time now, since he was nominated, Rigadi Gashagwa has been speaking, which is the truth. And in most cases, there's not a single day Rigadi Gashagwa has completed his entire speech without Kenyan speaking something. Remember before this event, the Nakuru governor, Lee Kinyanjui, had posted something on his Facebook page that Rigadi Gashagwa is actually a gift for them from God. And he challenged Rigadi Gashagwa to go to Molo and do two things. The first thing was to apologize to the families who felt his wrath when he was the Dio. And he also told him to do, there were two things he told him to do. So I think the deputy president was out to protect Rigadi Gashagwa because assuming Rigadi Gashagwa as a former Dio in the area, was given a chance to speak. Let's say 10 minutes. He was going to narrate what happened. In the audience, there's a chance that someone who was a victim was there. These people were going to stand up probably and tell Rigadi Gashagwa off because the issue is actually emotive. So the deputy president would have wanted a situation where these guys are speaking, are speaking their minds in the presence of Rigadi Gashagwa, so that Rigadi Gashagwa could actually apologize without the media hyping. So I think the deputy president wanted us to do those two things. Number one, protect Rigadi Gashagwa's image by not handing him over, I mean, by handing the microphone to him, but away from the media. And two, just to ensure that those who were present were going to speak their minds, especially the victims. But in the end of, at the end of the day, the main objective was to protect Rigadi Gashagwa from the microphone. Otherwise, if you give the Rigadi the microphone, he will always sleep. Number three, I think it has everything to do with Molo tribal clashes. The tribal clashes took place <laughs> Number three, it has everything to do with Molo tribal clashes, which took place in 1992. That one cannot be blamed on Railo Moloringa. Because all along, the deputy president has always portrayed Railo Moloringa as a man who is uh, violent. 1992, Railo Moloringa was not even on the ballot. Most of the victims are remembering the, the, the 1992. Of course, the meeting was about the, the minority tribes in uh, Molo. And the deputy presidents claimed that they were about uh, the 2007. Who are these people? The Kisses, the Luos, the Luyas. But the memory of Rigadi Gashagwa is still fresh in their minds. So I think the deputy president wanted to, uh, to explain something about the 2000 and. Uh, 92, maybe 2007, tribal clashes in Molo because it's going to be emotive. As long as Rigadi Gashagwa is in the picture, they will still come to the picture. And number four, I also tend to think that the deputy president wanted to discuss his strategy for Nakuru County and specifically with the Kikui diaspora. How are they going to campaign? Remember, as we speak, there is serious fallout within Kenya Kwanza in Akuru. The gubernatorial candidate, Susan Kehika, is not in talking terms with the, ba with the Bahati member of parliament, Kimani Nguje. Kimani Nguje played a huge role for the, de the deputy president, especially in the Kikuyu diaspora. He used to carry delegations of Wazes to Sugoi in most of the time. He was also very close ally of Oscar Sudi. Was one of the individuals who will attack President Uhuru Kenyatta. But when it comes to Molo, he's well aware of what took place. He's well aware how Molo 
the memory of Molo makes Kikuyu's bitter. But how are they going to campaign in Nakuru? Because initially, when Rigathi Gashaga was appointed, he was supposed to campaign amongst the Kikuyus and in Rift Valley, except in Nakuru. But for this particular meeting, the deputy president went with Rigathi Gashaga. Why do you think he tagged Rigathi Gashaga along? The UDA strategy for Nakuru. Remember this Kenya Kwanza, and then this UDA. William Ruto is keen on UDA more than any other team in Kenya Kwanza. And lastly, I think he wanted to give the audience the courage to speak. You see, when the media is there and you are speaking, you would fear that probably it will be aired. Then you will be marked. And once you are marked, you live a life of fear. Also, there are people who cannot speak openly as long as the media is there. So I tend to think that he wanted to give his audience the courage to speak their minds in the, in the name that the media were not there. But of course, we are in the era of uh, smartphones. I don't know whether people left their smartphones, smartphones at the gate, but the truth of the matter is that he wanted to give his audience the freedom to speak their minds. I don't know what you think. That's my take. There are opinion polls by Tifa, which shows that Sakaja, if elections were to be held in Nairobi today, Sakaja will win. And then in the same opinion polls, it says that Rail Odinga is ahead of the deputy president in Nairobi by 50% versus 25%. If you look at those figures, do you think they make sense? I don't think so. Maybe we look at it. There's another opinion poll most people have been tagging me that uh, Raila Ruto has 52, Raila 41 or something like that. I've not seen that opinion poll. So if you have it, please send it to my WhatsApp number so that I can go through it. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye-bye.